Chief, we are very happy to be here in your area. Uh, could you tell us please how long you have been Chief here and what is involved in that role here? He's saying that uh, my years has been six years now, uh, when the war of struggle in 1955 started that when my father died and I became a chief. So it's about six years. You must have seen many changes over that period of time. Could you say a little bit about how things have moved on and what your hopes are for the future, please? <laughs> He's saying that uh, a lot of things which are not good had happened to us and uh, that we have suffered quite a lot. Uh, our politicians were divided and he mentioned a lot of names and, uh, and overnight uh, actually basically talking about the the 1955 agreement when the split happened between the English, Southern Sudanese and the Arabs that uh, was what they call round table in Juba. Uh, so the, the decision was to separate the South already but uh, some of our politicians were brave overnight so next day they decide that they will stay with the North in unity and they will kick the English out, the British. Uh, and so the war is started and we suffer for 60 years. And how do you see the future? Are you optimistic and hopeful? You need to see the CPA agreement with John Garankan and uh, uh, he's saying precisely that uh, uh, he can't wait the election to come, uh, uh, the referendum, 
and that we will vote for independence. That uh, the North have done dreadful thing to us, and I think we don't want to be in unity with them. Uh, we want to just to be left alone here in this house. Uh, so he perfectly saying that we vote for independence of this house and uh, and leave the pass. Uh, he's saying that uh, they have done bad thing, and uh, I'm saying you help us to to be separated or to divorce them. <laughs> He's saying that uh, that those are the wounds of being tied down for many days because his brother uh, was uh, one away to join the rebels to fight during the first war, and he's showing uh, the ropes that were tied at his back. So, for this reason or another reason, he doesn't want to stay in unity with the North. Now there's something we, we can really appreciate and in Europe where we come from there is a lot of understanding and sympathy and support for the cause of the southern Sudanese people and that is one reason why the project here has caught the imagination of so many people. We're delighted that you are part of our advisory council and perhaps finally, could I ask you how you see the school here in partnership with the community and how we can move forward together uh, to take this project to the next stage? La madrasa, chuo kuntan, bubut, la mandan kan, yeting bugyal guir kadaman. Need to start from the last word that this is your country. You are welcome to it. And that uh, uh, there should be a school for girls and for boys, and that you continue. We have a very vast area of land. And then if you have ability to build, build many schools and, uh, and <laughs> five of them. And, uh, and that will help us to educate a lot uh, of our children. And, uh, and <laughs> Uh, he's telling a, a story that uh, uh, he was when he was captured, and uh, because of one of his brother, and he asked the, his captures that how many brothers have you got, and and he said he got four brothers, and he replied, and so do I. Uh, but if your brother, who you don't know, and my brother has his educated person want to cut him to study and I don't know what make him very angry and he, he, he rebel against the government and want to fight. Uh, can just uh, soldiers come to his other brother and just capture him, torture him because of the other person who has rebelled for reason that I also don't know and, uh, and the northern officer said to him that no and he said why are you capturing me and that man have compassion on him and he said let him be released and that what saved his life thank you for telling us that and thank you very much for this interview and we look forward to seeing you for the opening on friday thank you <laughs>